Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the Enoch Times this Friday evening. I've got some breaking news to bring you all. Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Now, boys and girls, I want you to picture the scene. It's night time. Jesus is in a garden with some of his disciples. And Jesus is so anxious and filled with grief over what he's going to have to endure on the cross. that he's not just sweating, but he's sweating sweat drops of blood. Now imagine you're so nervous for something. Your palms might be a bit sweaty. Your heart race might be beating faster. But Jesus was so anxious that he was sweating drops of blood. That shows us how big of an ordeal this was going to be for Jesus. But Jesus didn't give up. He didn't say, I'm not doing it. Jesus knew that this was his mission. His mission was to go to the cross because that's what God wanted him to do. And Jesus wanted to please God. Now, the first thing in the Easter story is that Jesus was betrayed. Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples. Can anyone remember which disciple it was? It was Judas. Judas had went behind Jesus' back and he was secretly planning with the religious leaders to get Jesus arrested. Judas said, this is the plan I've come up with. We'll go to the Garden of Gethsemane where he knew Jesus would be because that was a garden that they all went to. He said, I'll go. I'll give Jesus a kiss on the cheek so you'll know which man to arrest. So Jesus arrived in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went up to Jesus and he kissed him on the cheek. Jesus was arrested and Judas was given 30 pieces of silver. Imagine betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. But Jesus knew this was going to happen. This wasn't a surprise to Jesus. So they arrested Jesus and they took him to a man called Pilate, who was the governor. Pilate talked to Jesus and he said, I can't really see any reason why we should arrest Jesus. I can find no fault in him. But the religious leaders weren't happy with that. They said, oh no, Pilate, we have to get rid of Jesus. He's been spreading lies. He's been causing upset with the people. But we know that that wasn't true. Jesus wasn't a liar. You see, the religious leaders were jealous because people had started to listen to Jesus rather than them. And they were jealous and they wanted to get rid of him. But every year, Pilate would let one prisoner go. And the people, the crowd would decide who it would be that he would let go. So Pilate gave them a choice. I can release Jesus, who is innocent, or I can release a man called Barabbas, who was a criminal. Now, who do you think the crowd chose? They chose Barabbas, the criminal, over Jesus. So Jesus was taken away. He was beaten. He was whipped. He was even made to carry his own heavy cross. Now his body would have been full of sores and cuts and bruises. He would have been tired and he had to carry this cross. Because boys and girls, don't forget that Jesus was fully God. But he was also fully human. And he felt every single pain just like we would have. So Jesus was put on the cross. Does anybody know the name for dying on a cross? It's called being crucified. Jesus was crucified. They put nails in his hands and his feet to put him onto the wooden cross. They put a crown of thorns on his head to make fun of him. They said, ha, you say you're king of the Jews. Well, there's your crown. You're no king. You're nobody. You're just a liar. That's what they thought. And that's what they said to Jesus. But we know that Jesus was the king. That Jesus was a king of the entire world. Jesus was thirsty. 
So they gave him a drink, but it was vinegar, which would have made him even more thirsty. Jesus' pain on the cross was excruciating. That means really, really, really bad. We can't imagine what it was like for Jesus to be on the cross. Now, a darkness came all over the land. Imagine, that would have been strange to see. The world and the place suddenly going dark. And the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. That's what the Bible says. Jesus gave up his spirit. Now that's really important. Because it says Jesus gave up. The Romans didn't take Jesus' life. No one could take Jesus' life. Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus knew this is what he had to do and he did it. Wow, thank you Jesus for dying on the cross for us. Now whenever Jesus died, there was an earthquake and the Bible says that the curtain in the temple was torn in two. But what does that mean? So, the curtain in the temple tore in two. What does that mean? Why did the Bible tell us about it? Well, on one side, we've got people, which is us. And the other side, we've got God. But we're separated by a big thing called sin. Now, we're over here, and we can't get over to God. We can't be friends with God because sin is in the way. But what did Jesus do on the cross? What did he get rid of? He got rid of sin, which meant the curtain tore in two like this to show that Jesus destroyed sin. Which means the sin's gone. So what does that mean? That means that the people, us, we can now get to God. We can have a relationship with God, but only if we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sin. We've talked about how bad Jesus' physical pain would have been on the cross because he was fully human. But what about the pain because he was fully God? Well, Jesus never sinned. We know that. Jesus was innocent. Yet, Jesus took on himself the sin of the world. That's everybody's sin. That's so much sin that God took on himself. And God is perfect and holy and, and can't look at sin. God can't have sin because he's perfect. It was painful. It was hard. It was dark. It was deep. I want you to think of these post-it notes as sins, okay? So Jesus takes on sins onto his body. Maybe lying, cheating, stealing. Maybe being cheeky to someone you know. Maybe making fun of someone. Maybe taking God's name in vain. God took on all the sin of the world. He wasn't a sinner, but he was a sin carrier. He took on all the sin. He was covered in sin. And when he died, the sin died with him. Which means Jesus killed our sin. He took it. He took our sin. And he crushed it. And he put it to death. And he got rid of it. So it would never be able to come back to us. Now that doesn't mean that we'll never ever sin again because we know we sin every day. But it means that Jesus forgives us of our sin, free from the hold of sin. Oh, yes, I'm getting some new messages from the newsroom. Good morning. Thanks for joining us again on the Enoch Times this Sunday morning. I've got some more breaking news to bring you. Some of the most incredible news I've ever heard. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. 
Jesus had been betrayed. He'd been crucified, but that wasn't the end of the story. Hallelujah. Jesus was alive. Jesus had arisen from the dead. What a great truth. And the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead will one day resurrect us and everyone we know who's a Christian so that they too can get to go to live with God forever. And we know God can do it because he did it before with Jesus. So let's read about Jesus's resurrection. This is found in the Bible in Luke 24. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking spices they had prepared. But they found that the stone had been rolled away. So they went in, but they were puzzled. Where was Jesus's body? Two men suddenly appeared in dazzling robes. These women were terrified and fell down to the ground and hid their faces. The men asked, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? For he is alive. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Let's pause and think about those words that those women were hearing. He is not dead. He is risen. Wow, incredible. Remember what he told you. The Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, religious leaders, and crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. And then they remembered this. So they rushed back to the tomb to tell the disciples and everyone else what had happened. Wow. How incredible is Jesus? That he knew what his mission was. It was hard. It was painful, both physically and spiritually for him. But because he loved you and me, he went to the cross and he died. So that if we believe in him, and we ask him for forgiveness, he will take away our sin. And what does that mean if Jesus takes away our sin? Well, that means that we live a life for him. That we can live our lives without the barrier of sin between us and God. That we can have a relationship with God. And God in return, God is a great exchange. I want to tell you about the great exchange that Jesus makes on the cross. So we're here, we're sinners, we have sin, and Jesus is over here, he's righteous, which means righteous, right with God. He's right with God, he's friends with God. Jesus is full of love and peace and grace and forgiveness and hope. But what Jesus does is he takes our sin onto himself. He takes our sin onto himself and we're over here with no sin anymore because he's taken it away from us. It doesn't hold us down anymore. But that's not the end of it. Not only does he take our sin from us, but he gives us something back. He gives us his righteousness. Jesus allows us to be right with God. Jesus gives us his love, his peace, his grace, his forgiveness, and his hope. How amazing is Jesus? And I want us to think this week about all that he's done for us. And I want us to be so thankful to him for how much he loves us and cares for us and the hope that we have to be forgiven of sin, to live for him and to one day get to live with him in heaven forever. Happy Easter.
Get to know our God again. The Lord is. 